It's been a while since I have done any reviews on lenses. However, today that is about to change because today I have with me the 7 Artisans 35mm 0.95 lens. Just as a quick disclaimer, the lens was loaned to me by YL Camera. I didn't buy the lens and they didn't tell me what to say in this review. Okay, so back to the lens. This is my first ever try at a lens that has an aperture greater than 1.2. And to be honest with you guys, if I said I wasn't excited, it would definitely be a lie. I'm sure some of you guys know by now how much I am a bokeh junkie. So to have finally a lens in my hands that can open up all the way to 0.95 is just crazy in my opinion. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, yes, Malaysia is still under COVID movement control order as the number of cases has increased ever since the new Delta variant came about. I am really hoping that things will turn out better real soon. Anyway, let's first talk about the build quality of this lens. Well, what can I say? The lens is made from some kind of aluminium metal, I think, and it is seriously quite hefty for its size. There's definitely a substantial weight to it when you hold it. In fact, side by side, comparing it with the 7 Artisans 35 1.2, I'd say that this 0.95 looks way bigger. Okay, in terms of lens construction, this lens is built with 11 elements in 8 groups. The lens that I have with me is for the Fuji FX mount. Speaking of which, I think this lens has the most gorgeous mount I have ever seen. The mount has got this really unique titanium or gunmetal kind of hue to it and it is simply gorgeous. The lens comes with a slide on cap that I'm definitely not a fan of ever since buying my 35mm 7 Artisans 1.2 because I find these type of lens caps in general are not as secure on the lenses especially if you accidentally knock your lens and if you'd like to watch that review go ahead and click on the link on the right hand side but with all that being said i would say that this lens has amazing build quality for its price i mean seriously in terms of build quality please forgive me for saying this but i seriously was hard pressed to differentiate this lens build quality from any other premium lenses out there like seriously i think kudos is definitely due to seven artisans for always stepping up in their game I mean, compared to my 7 Artisans 25 1.8, this is aeons ahead in terms of build quality. By the way, if you'd like to check out that video, you can click on the link on the right hand side to watch it. Okay, so now that we have the build quality out of the way, let's now talk about the specs of this China made bokeh beast. In terms of weight, this lens weighs 369 grams, and for something that has a length of around 2 inches, it definitely is a heavy little lens. In fact, it's double the weight of the 7 Artisans. Artisan's 35 1.2 lens. This lens has a focal length of 35 millimeters, which is quite obvious by now, and that is equivalent to a standard 50 millimeter focal length lens on a full frame camera. As for the aperture, this lens is built with 12 aperture blades and it opens up all the way to 0.95 and it can be closed down to f16. For those of you filmmakers out there, you will be happy to know that this lens is built from the factory with a D click aperture ring. However, it would have been great if this lens had a way to switch from click to de-click depending on whether you want to use it for photos or videos. I know it's just a small gripe because these days I'm more and more drawn to de-click lenses as I tend to be shooting more videos lately and having a de-click aperture ring for videos is simply amazing in my opinion. Okay in terms of minimum focusing distance this lens can shoot from a minimum of 37 centimeters away which isn't bad but I would definitely have preferred if it could have been slightly closer for those close-up kind of shots but it's definitely not a deal breaker for me in terms of lens mount this lens comes with five different mount options which include the Sony E mount Fuji FX mount Canon M mount micro four thirds and also the Nikon Z mount as for the focusing and aperture ring I must say it's super smooth and as mentioned earlier this lens really feels like any other premium lenses out there okay so now let's talk about the usability and my experience using this lens firstly I would like to say that I'm so happy that we are living in an age where more and more cameras have switched to mirrorless technology. I think lenses like this definitely can be fully appreciated and taken advantage of because of the mirrorless technology cameras. Why I say this is because mirrorless cameras these days can focus far more accurately through the EVF. What you see in the EVF is literally what you're going to snap. And with advanced focusing aids like focus peaking and other types of focus assistance that exist in mirrorless cameras these days, manual lenses have found more and more relevance to be used these days, especially if you're on a tighter budget. Using this lens in general was a joy as the focusing and aperture adjustments are very smooth.
smooth and well dampened. If there was a small complaint for me, it would be the fact that I do find that the focus throw is slightly long as it takes half a circle to focus from infinity to its closest focusing distance of 37 centimeters. I just found that the long focus throw can be a little bit fiddly, but I guess there's a reason why they did that. And I think it's definitely something to do with that huge 0.95 aperture, because with an aperture that large, you will get a lot of things very quickly out of focus as the depth of field is just so razor thin. That being said, I was seriously pleasantly surprised that despite its razor thin depth of field, I found getting tech sharp focus subjects wasn't as hard as I anticipated for this lens, which was a great relief to learn. The other thing that was really surprising is the fact that this lens is extremely sharp for a 0.95 lens. Not that I have tried any before this, but I really didn't expect that. As I was thinking, it may be a little soft wide open. Compared to my 7 Artisans 35 1.2, this lens is definitely way sharper, especially in the middle of the frame. And in terms of bokeh balls, this lens renders beautiful, well-rounded bokeh balls wide open. And you just can't get enough of that bokeh-liciousness, in my opinion. Okay, in terms of barrel distortion, I would say I didn't really notice much of it. And in terms of chromatic aberrations and lens flaring, it definitely does exist if you are shooting wide open against a bright subject but nothing that is totally terrible in my opinion and it is to be expected for large aperture lenses like this and this problem isn't just unique to cheap lenses but I've seen some premium lenses too that have this issue whenever there's harsh lighting around okay so that's enough talk here are some photos and video samples for you guys to get an idea of what this lens can really render anyway just to let you guys know I was shooting 99% of the time time at 0.95 as I really wanted to demonstrate to you guys just how good this lens is wide open. I guess the whole reason anyone wants to buy a 0.95 lens would be because you want to shoot it at 0.95 right? So if you guys really want to know what this lens looks like stop down then I guess you gotta check out other videos on that. Sorry about that. Okay, so what's my conclusion after using this lens for a bit now? Who do I think should really get this lens? Well, to me, it really boils down to what you are shooting. If you are someone who shoots mainly portraits, weddings, lifestyle, street photography with a stylized edge, then this lens is definitely going to give you a very unique look with its razor thin depth of field. And you are definitely going to be pleased with the results. However, if you really want a lens that is super sharp throughout the frame, then this lens is clearly not for you. As mentioned, this lens is more focused for stylized sort of shots and artistic shots. It will definitely not suit shooting things that require pinpoint accurate focus kind of shots. Also, this is definitely a lot of lens to bring if you know you can't afford to miss any shots. It's a lens to use when you know you have time to compose and you have time to focus your lens. Hmm. However, with all that being said, this lens has definitely been making me feel like wanting to get it too, just for the 0 0.9 five novelty factor because it's so affordable. I mean, I don't have any lenses with such a wide aperture as that, so it's really tempting. What this lens has demonstrated to me is that not all things that are affordable aren't made well. And this is just one example of that. In a nutshell, this is a wonderful lens to own. And at this price, it really isn't a huge investment to make because the same lens made by any other premium company out there would cost literally a few months mortgage. Right. So that's it then. I hope you did find this short review helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to give me a like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you do feel like supporting me by buying me a cup of coffee, I have also left links in the description down below. Also, I've left links in the description down below to all the gears that I use to make these videos. Anyway, that's it then. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.